So the Cincinnati Bengals went ahead and hosted a tight end today. A tight end that has been on the active roster before. This is actually a man who caught a touchdown pass by from Andy Dalton and left in 2020 on Joe Burrow's, you know, obviously played 10 games and got hurt. I watched seven videos on how to say his name because I'm going to make sure moving forward, guys, I do say players' name correctly. Stephen Carter <laughs> is his name. And, of course, he is kind of interesting because, yes, his only touchdown in his career came by Andy Dalton in 2019. Um, also was like his first pass of the game or something. But anyway, though, he is an interesting player because he's listed as fullback on like the Miami Dolphins roster. But then he also was, he played tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals. He definitely has the frame of six foot three, two 248 pounds to be like a blocking tight end, which is really actually nice. Um, but yes, yeah, so they brought him in today to kind of see what they could get, like if they could sign him. And I'm going to guess that they do sign him. He'd be a one-year league minimum deal. Most likely this signing would just be to add depth purposes. Slash being able to, you know, have a veteran leader in there. To kind of teach whoever you do end up drafting. Because let's be honest, since he is drafting two tight ends this year. Okay, they're definitely drafting two tight ends this year. Uh, no matter what. So, with that being said, you bring him in. He kind of can teach those tight ends how to block, how to be better, you know, overall-wise. And also, their veteran experience of being in the NFL. And then, that literally helps out the whole entire team. And, you know, help develop your tight end group moving forward. Because, other than that, I can't really see the reason why you would kind of go back to him or pick him up. Other than just to get a kind of leader at a tight end position. And I will say, you know, this is where I feel like players, like, um, when players do retire, obviously he's only 28 years old. He's probably not going to retire. But, you know, you kind of, he comes back to Cincy, right? Plays with the, plays with you guys. He's a tight end group. Oh, sorry. He um, helps the rookie tight ends develop. And then, who knows, down the line, he could become the tight end coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's, you know, one of those situations where it's like you join a squad for a you know, league minimum just to kind of, you know, help develop receivers. You're pretty much getting paid to be a coach when you're probably never going to see the field. And then eventually you just become the tight ends coach. So I'm not saying 1000% that he is the guy who needs to teach all tight ends how to play football. Obviously they bring him in. He will get some play time. He will get some snaps and he will <clears throat> obviously, you know, run some routes. But the good thing about him is he already knows Callahan's offense. He already knows, you know, he already knows the Cincinnati Bengals, which is actually really good. He already fit this culture for three years. So it's not like this is a random nobody coming in. It's a guy who already knows the system, who already knows how the organization works, who already knows what he can and can't do. And while, yes, he never blossomed to be anything special, I think this guy could definitely help you guys out a lot, and especially for league minimum. Again, like I said, this is so stressed enough. That league minimum is why I'm saying yes. I am not saying yes to a $2 million deal. I am not saying yes to a $1 million deal. I'm talking about a 970 k league minimum deal. One year, no guarantees. Period. I would not be against this idea just to bring in some depth purposes. Just to bring in a player who knows the system and really could help develop you know, the tight end group. I talked about this earlier with Mike. Obviously, Mike ended up signing with the New England Patriots. Um, and again, I talked about him being that vertical threat slash guy that could come in and, you know, really shape in the whole team, uh, shape in the whole tight end group. But he was a one-year, $9 million deal. And in the end of the day, if you're going to bring someone in, he would obviously be the star tight end. But the problem is that if you bring him in, even with a one-year, $9 million deal, you know, he's focused more on the actual game than he is helping right and you don't know maybe he comes in and he won't help maybe he'll like hey listen I'm here to you know make my money and catch touchdown passes I don't give a crap about any other player in this squad I care about me I don't know him personally I don't know how he is but maybe that's the case you bring uh Carter in Carter knows his sister he knows his role here right you make it very clear listen we're gonna instead of you retiring and you know never getting signed by the NFL team again 
Instead, we're going to give you another chance. You're going to make almost a million dollars. And all we need you to do is help develop this team. It's all we need you to do, right? So it's very clear. It's cut. It's listen. This is what your job is. We need you to kind of be a coach, but also play some snaps as tight end if we need you to. I think it would be a really good idea, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. And obviously, Cincinnati does, too, because they brought him in today. <laughs> they would have brought him in if they didn't think that this was a good idea to do so. But, yeah. So, guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, though. Would you sign him? Would you not sign him? Definitely want to hear your opinions down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.